welcome back. And it better be back if you know what's good for you. Sopranos Prima Volta is back. Of course, you know by now, Ian Finance over here. Hey, great, over here. Over here now. Uh, great New York City comedian. iAnimal69 on Twitter is watching The Sopranos for the very first time. Yes. I, Sam Roberts, the Sam is not Sam. I've seen The Sopranos many, many, many times, but it's such a rare treat to get to experience it through the eyes of magic and wonderment of one watching for the first time. I said, let's chronicle this journey. Ian said, let's chronicle this journey. Yes. And here we are chronicling this journey. We've gone through uh, all the episodes previously here on the Not Sam YouTube channel. So just click back and watch any of the episodes you've missed. Because today, we're not quite finishing season two. Almost done. We're getting close to that finish line. Today, we're getting through episodes 10, 11, and 12. And 12. Yes. Of Sopranos season two. Yes. And it is a prima volta. It is a first time watch for me. And I have to say, you know, you've seen it so many times. And this is kind of like, you know, uh, I'm making the sauce for the first time. We call it gravy. I'm making the gravy. For the first time. Mm -hmm. And your it's your recipe. Right. Because you've made it so many times that you are the one guiding me through my first time. Yeah. But the great thing about the first time is that I can follow the recipe, but it's going to be your first time tasting mine. Right. And so you might get a little hints of a different flavor I've added, which kind of brings a new gravy to you oh absolutely there's a there's a familiarity with the gravy yes that it's like you make it the certain way and you forgot the first time you put a pinch of pepper in yes and you go even though that's not part of my recipe i forgot how good it tasted yes. with that fresh pepper yes and like a recipe we're making the gravy and we're sharing it with all of you that's right because you are a familiar familia our paisans are Commendatores. Yes. Those are what I think that's the name of the fans of the show, the Commendatores. Friend, friends of ours? Friends of... Friends of ours. Ours. Friends of ours. Yes. Are you a friend of ours? I'm a friend of yours. I'm it means a I'm a friend of, of ours. Yeah, I would say so. Episode 10 is where we'll start today. Whew. Episode Man. 10. The episode is called... Bust, Bust out. out. This is... Uh, uh, okay, so... Uh, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff going on in this episode, but I think we should pick up kind of where we left off the last time, and that's with the Bevilacqua story. Yes. Of course, uh, the murder of Matthew Bevilacqua, really, and this is kind of the amazing thing, that when you go through this story, right, you're watching Matthew Bevilacqua and Sean mm -hmm. as, a, as a tandem, and you're watching them throughout these the nine episodes that they mm -hmm. were alive for. And you're, well, I guess it was eight for Sean and nine for yes. Matt. But you're like, but before they croaked, you're going, oh, is this going to be the next generation? Or is mm -hmm. that the next Christopher? Is that, and you're like, what is, what is the greater purpose for these characters on the show? Yes. And really to me, mm -hmm. I think as we discussed last time, the, the greater purpose of these characters, three things. Mm. Number one, mm -hmm. the relationship between Tony and Christopher. Yes. Because we see how Tony feels when Christopher gets laid up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Number two, the relationship between Tony and Pussy. Yes. Because we watched their friendship come back together through the murder. We had to get through a murder. Nothing brings people closer than murder. That's right. It's, it's, a, it's an experience that they mm -hmm. have together. And then the third thing is that it, it creates the the danger and the, the the reality of the situation that Tony is in mm -hmm. and that Tony has to be much more careful about what he does and what he says and who he says and does things in front of yes. going forward because he's the boss of a family that is now sort of very well known. And that kind of concept is what we start to explore uh, in this episode, and we go in into episode 11 as well, but this is where we have a witness that we find out. Yes. Saw the Bevilacqua kid with two men. Yes. One of whom he describes. 
Tony as Soprano. Tony Soprano. Yes. And the other one he couldn't make out. He was heavy set. And, and but I, I I will say this th- again in that last episode when they were eating, they go to the same place Pussy took Tony when he popped his cherry, killing his first person. Right. And it brings it full circle, and it shows that all they needed for their friendship to get closer was murder. That, that's it. And I'm saying to the commentators out there, somebody said that we should get a Patreon to get us to Italy to go see. <laughs> wow. I'll raise the stakes like yeah. a high-stakes poker game. Yeah. And I'll say- an, execu- an executive game. Like an executive game. Yeah. Maybe we get a couple donations, and you and me murder someone together. You think that's what could take this relationship to the next level? I th- I think that'll make make us closer. I mean, and, it, and it, it'll give us something to talk about, and re- and make us really feel what it's like to be a soprano. I'm trying to think of an example I can think of where murder did not bring the two people closer together, and it can't. No. So it could be a great idea, commendatories. Are we re-examining that murder could be good? Are the Sopranos that great? Is David Chase that good of a writer that we should well, really... He's He's got you convinced that all these murderers are frogs that are going to heaven. Uh-huh. So I would say, I mean, that's yes. my favorite Disney movie, All Frogs Go to Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing was more evident. Now, Pussy... Yes. ...has found himself in a little bit of trouble because he's... He's at odds with Skip, yeah, because he's feeling a loyalty to Tony. Mm-hmm. And Skip is st- the FBI agent, of course, is starting to get suspicious. The pussy was the man who was with Tony because mm-hmm. pussy is so tight-lipped, yeah, about the uh, somehow he has no details mm-hmm. about this Bevilacqua killing. And Skip is starting to think, mm-hmm. puss. What are you doing here? Yeah. What are you doing, Pussy? Well, the relationship with Skip and Pussy is weird because it's like Skip's got Pussy against the ropes, but then Pussy eventually like tries to befriend Skip. Yeah. And then he wants to be a fucking, you know, FBI guy. Well, well look, I mean, being in the mob with your best friend. Yeah. And then becoming an informant mm. has got to be one of the most mentally taxing things yeah. a man like Big Pussy can go through. Yeah. I mean, this is, he is, he has become everything that he hates. Yeah. Everything that he is raised to hate. And you're talking about mentally taxing. It's so funny. You watch mafia documentaries, you watch his movies, and it, it always talks about, you know, like the, what these guys did and everything. And, you know, he was, he doesn't really talk about their family life that much, but you no. always know these guys have families. And, and yeah. I think I said on the last episode, but it is so jarring and interesting to see them committing these horrible acts, these unforgivable acts, living these lot, and they just go, I gotta leave. And then you see them deal with this, the heaviness of taking a life. And then they go home and, and Tony's got a, listen to Carmela talk about Meadow at school. Right. You know, he's got to deal with, you know... You know, your son got a D on his paper. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, well, I, you know, I just watched blood off my shoes for the past two hours. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we we, we see that within these next few episodes. Oh, yeah. um, You asked a very interesting question uh, about Davey. Mm-hmm. A few episodes back, yes. hoping that the Davy story wasn't over. Yes. Well, here is the episode where the Davy story isn't over, and we see wow that they have turned that man's life completely upside down. That they've realized and like look, a fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flip turned it upside down. Uh huh. He got in one little poker game. Yeah. And his he got and his wife got scared. Now, interestingly, we're seeing Tony and Richie work together on this at first. Like when they're in the shop, mm-hmm. they seem to be on the same page. Hilarious! They have to have their meetings in these places. You mean like at a sporting goods store that or they're just hospital. shaking down? Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. But it's also like, so you wonder: is this because Tony doesn't want to hurt Davy, right? He doesn't want to hurt him. No. You could kill him. Right. Do you think that that Tony is trying to figure out how Davey can pay his debt without hurting him because he's an old friend? Or does Tony 
see, like, look, I see what you've got. I see you've got the store. I know how this game works. You know what I mean? Tony is a vampire that will suck the life out of anyone and dispose of their body and move on. But with Davey, he makes him his there's a thing vampires can do where they make someone like their other or whatever mm. where they don't suck all the blood out of them they do just enough to where that person then becomes like the servant of the vampire to then do their bidding during the day yeah and that's what he does to davy yeah davy is like slowly losing yeah everything He's slowly draining the life out of him very he doesn't slowly mercifully take it away he no. just slowly but i i don't understand the ins and outs of what they do with the business with like liquidating the business and then like they're just in the store wrecking it like i i don't under and they're like sell these coolers i'm like what yeah well how does that work my my takeaway was that they were getting product and anything else from the suppliers that they were going to then sell through the through their channels, through back end channels, the same way like the same way they get things that fell off a truck when they rob a truck and uh, they have a crate, you know, a big thing of like DVD okay. players. Okay, so so they're taking all the merchandise. So then the sporting goods store becomes their uh, warehouse and command center, right? For and, and, all their things, and okay. I think that it's like uh, they're not paying for it; mm -hmm. they're buying it on the store's credit. With the distributors going, okay, well, this store, we'll, we'll send the store a bill at the end of the month for all the merchandise that we sent them. And then they don't pay the bill. Well, yeah, and then that's Davies. Gotcha. Problem. And then gotcha. Davies going to have to declare bankruptcy gotcha. to get out of it. And that's, okay. And, and Tony is literally like, I mean, you saw him when he's talking to Dave when Davies sleeping in the tent. Oh, dude, that was such a heartbreaking moment where Davies like, remember when I was 11 and I came to town and Tony's like, don't. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Me. Don't do it. You, you almost see the inner workings of how they compartmentalize their misdeeds. Yeah. Of like, you have to distance yourself. And, and, and. This person cannot be your friend. They cannot be your relative. This is business. Eyes like black like wing of crow. Right. You and cannot. There's no room for thought. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one of those things. And it goes back to the earlier Davy episodes too, where it's like, if. Davey didn't listen to Tony and tried to reminisce anyway, Tony would get violent with him. You yes. know what I mean? Like Tony would, and then, and blame you. Like I told you not to do this. Mm -hmm. You're going to make, cause I'm going to make sure that you don't do this. Yeah. So either stop or I'm going to stop you. Don't make me <sighs> stop you. No Heavy. No conscience. No conscience whatsoever because it's all part of the thing. Well, you that's know, what's so interesting that, about the therapy and he, is but, it that's but, slowly seeping a consciousness. Into he, him. It is, but he also had that conversation. He talks to Davey about the fact that he, you know, I knew you had the store. Why'd you let me play in that game? Well, I told yeah, you not to, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew you had the store. You know why I love this episode? Because huh. you know what he says? What? Something about the scorpion and the frog. He says it. Is that what he says? On the episode. Oh, yeah, you're right. And he gives himself the title of the scorpion. Does he? Yep. Does he say it underwater? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Like David Chase. After weeks of yeah. scorpion and the frog references, we have paid it off here on Prima Volta. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know what? But, but isn't it interesting that Tony knows... Because... I think there was a time, and maybe it was before therapy, mm -hmm. where Tony would claim... I'm the frog. Yeah, maybe. And that that, that he wasn't being manipulative, mm -hmm. that Davey said he wanted to play, so he so he let him play, and he mm -hmm. told him not to, but he let him play anyway, and he just, this is just mm -hmm. what he's, what, what happened. Um, and, and then, you know, like, like, uh, like with, like with Artie. Artie accuses him of something yeah. very, very similar, and Tony's almost offended by it. But when it's Davey, mm -hmm. Tony comes clean. He says, I knew you had the store. Well, it's growth a little bit. A little bit. But I'll, And speaking of growth, I'll say, hey, I was wrong about the scorpion and the frog. Oh, you don't have to. You and know that's what? what's so beautiful about this show is it gives you something to think about. And I'll tell you this. Mm. Salute. 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 <laughs> Um, 
But yeah, it is it is like pathetic to watch. I mean, this grown ass man, and we see Davy go through all this stuff, I mean, and he's the scene at the bar. I mean, we're, 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 well, yeah. Man, I Jesus. mean, that that's all, and we see him, but we see him almost committing suicide. Yeah, and his with wife, a gun. Yeah, and speaking of guns, we see fucking Jan is getting railed out by Richie with a gun to her head. <laughs> yeah, she does. I mean, <laughs> yes, she does. Oh, wow. Wow, Richie Light. Richie's a freak. I mean, is the word freak? What we're gonna call sociopath? Him here? Sociopath yeah, yeah, is yeah. the answer. There he's a sociopath. Yeah, he's a murderous, yeah. dangerous yep. sociopath. Yeah, yep. yeah. No, I would say that. Yep. Yeah. Um. So, the bar scene that you're talking about, I think, is the big kind of hook to this episode, and that's where. And I, you must have loved this because we're diving even further into Carmela. Yeah, and this is where Victor Musto. Mm. comes over and my is that is that not a handsome man i mean handsome doesn't even begin to describe it <laughs> yeah. you don't call a total package handsome uh, you call right. it a total package he is he's the total package yeah and i mean and you don't even know how much he cares about his family until later in the episode oh my god total package and again later in the episode multiple times you see what the name soprano means yeah yes absolutely you but see Yes. The, and and also again, like you see the naivete mm -hmm. of Carmela. Uh, is it naivete? When she shows up at the store and she's like, Thank you for being a strong man to think about us is and it, me. Is it naivete or is she just trying to denial. tell herself denial? It's let me tell you something, man, it's more than a river in Egypt. Woo! Okay, because if Carmela were really that naive, uh huh, would she have really orchestrated the meetings that she orchestrated with Victor? She didn't yeah, call right. that man she over looked, for wallpaper. She, yeah, and she looked up the receipt and showed up at his Ooh, store. She knew what she was doing, boy. And she was making a nice little meal. Let me tell you something. When that assistant walked in, that lunch wasn't for him. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Roberto or whatever his name was. No, that's what she said. Roberto, whatever your name is, yeah. it's the same for you. It's the same for you. This is a meal for two, but you're not one of them. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Now, yeah, it really was, uh, uh, it, but it also, you know, it's interesting because Carmela ends up, you know, having the hots for this Victor Musto. How, how could you blame her? But here's where Carmela is not so innocent. Mm -hmm. She does act upon those feelings. She does. Well, Carmela's she does, got wants and needs. I understand. Carmela's got desires. But, Tony's not really that present. Okay, but let me ask you this. What? Tony physically cheats. Yes. He is physically with women outside of his marriage. Doesn't. Would you rather have someone cheat emotionally or physically? <sighs> emotionally is tough to come back from. Yeah. Probably. I, I would rather hear. Physically is a mistake. I Yes. I would rather hear, ah, oh, fuck, if I fuck this guy or I fuck this girl, I'm sorry. But if I found out that you were like meeting up with someone or like calling at night or if someone... If someone else is making you laugh, if mm. someone else is making you laugh. What is that? Brass knuckles. Why do you have brass knuckles? Because I'm an earner. Oh, I didn't realize. Because I'm a soldier. Yeah, no, that's it. You brought brass knuckles to and, the Prima Volta. And because people are getting stabbed on the atrium and I go home <laughs> late at night. <laughs> And I also bought my girlfriend a taser <laughs> on the street. Hey, these streets are dangerous. It's New York City, baby. Yeah. You know? New York. Yeah. Huh? And you got brass knucks. Oh, I got brass knucks. Well. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Because you're, you're an earner. It's got a little thing here. It's not really brass knuckles. It's a belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> If if well, Wyatt tapped up and Agent Harris is listening, oh yeah, guess what? It's a belt buckle. It's a belt buckle. It's That's the way you said it. It's a belt buckle. It's a belt buckle. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. And the way Carm kind of begins that, you know, I mean, the kiss is not the problem. Mm -mm. It's the emotions. It's yep. the, the meal. It's and, the inviting. It's, 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 it's the, the wallpaper. It's, it's the, the uh, idea of what a normal life could be. Well, that's what she's looking. She's not looking, I don't think, at this guy 
as Victor Musto. She's looking at what Victor Musto represents. Right. That's a whole life. Yeah. Because the key is that his wife passed away. Yep. So she's thinking that, like, oh, she's not wanting to replace that woman today. She's mm -hmm. wanting to replace that woman years ago. Yeah. And live yep. that life. However, mm -hmm. Carm loves the fancy things. Carm does not want to live on a painter's salary. Yeah. Carm does not. Carm is not, because she could have. Carm, Carm wants to go to Italy for three weeks. She wants to go to Italy for three weeks. She wants to live in a mansion. A mm -hmm. big mansion, but a mansion. Yeah. She wants to be able to go to the plaza for breakfast with Meadow. Yep. She wants to be able to, you know, get her hair done and have mm -hmm. the outfits. Yep. You know? Little book club. Exactly. She wants this life. She doesn't want to be part of a dual income household. But it is funny because she does see what her life could be. And then when she looks at Janice and Richie, she sees this weird, like, Janice projecting this future with all the expenses and everything. And it kind of, like, upsets Carm because she sees, oh, that used to be me. And guess what, bitch? You're going to have to get used to it. Yes. Yes. And then... It's coming. And, and it's almost like Carm is warning... Warning, uh, what's her face about uh, Janice. Janice about all the problems that she sees, mm -hmm. but really what she's doing is talking about the problems that she has. Yeah, and that's tough for Carm to kind of come yeah. to grips with. I and think. is she and is she doing it because she cares about Janice, or is she doing no. it to fucking twist the knife? No, she's doing it to normalize it. She's doing it to normalize it to twist the knife. If I have to feel this, you have yeah. to feel this. Yep. This is, you know, if you, yep. it, it's because. Let me burst your bubble, bitch. Right. What could be worse than being married to Tony Soprano? Being married to Richie April. Boom. And that is where yep. Carmela is coming from. Yep. I got a good life compared to what you're going to have. Yep. You're going to have to deal with a lot worse than this. Guess what, Janice? Your man's not going to be faithful. It's not going to happen. But. What ends up happening is, and you see this beautiful crossplay of stories mm -hmm. where Victor is the brother-in-law of Davy. Yes. Davy's wife is Victor's sister. Yes. So they end up in a bar together, and this is where you see how bad things have gotten for Davy. Oh, yeah. Not only did he sell the kid's car, college fund is gone. The business. Every, the business is gone. When he then, then oh, When he goes like, all that's left is the college fund. And Davey just goes. He's quiet. No. And then No. And then he goes, I'll pay for the kids' college. And immediately goes, Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. And that's what he wanted. And it's so interesting. He goes, I got messed up with some bad people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See. Tony fucking Soprano. Tony manipulates Davey. Davey's manipulating Victor. Victor is seeing how bad it really gets with Tony. Mm -hmm. And that's, what Tony can do. Yes. That's what causes him to be like, you know what? Let me cut bait right now. And I don't want my business ruined. What Carmela doesn't even really realize, but we as the viewers realize, is everything that provides a comfortable life for Carmela mm -hmm. also forbids her happiness. Wow. Wow. Carmela will never be happy. Wow. In her life. If I was standing, I'd have to take a seat. <laughs> she will never tell you that much. She will never be happy because Tony Soprano's shadow is looming over her. Now that brings her all the goods, that brings her the house, that brings yeah. her the jewelry, that brings her the dresses, that brings her the food, that brings her the vacations. Two beautiful children. Mm -hmm. Well, one beautiful child and one that, Wow. But maybe a third. Could be. Hmm? But the minute that she finds happiness, it can never be. Yeah. Why? Tony is looming, and he hasn't even touched it. That name. Just, just, just the second or third degree touching of Tony Soprano is enough to back off. That name. Yep. That's it. And that's, you brought that up earlier. Mm -hmm. The name. I think last week. The name holds so much weight. That's right. That's right. And this is, and then, and then you end up with with Davy, whose life has fallen apart, and he's been friends with Tony forever, and and that can't even save him. So no one is safe, 
And I, I think, is this the episode where they're on the boat at the end with AJ? Tony and AJ, yeah. 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 And again, I think that's so beautiful because Tony on the boat as he is in life, he is full steam ahead, smiling, going forward, not giving a care to what he leaves in his wake, which is a literal wake on the water <laughs> that dumps people oh, in. You know what? If I was standing up right now, I'd have to sit down. <laughs> Well, salute. Why don't we just salute and salute? Salute. Yeah, you're a hundred percent right. Just moving yep. forward, being a good dad to his son AJ, who, by the way, he verbally abused. Yeah. Before this, like and then he got some pizza. He destroyed him. Destroyed. Yeah. Like those. You can't take those words back. Yeah. But he gave him a pizza and a boat ride, mm -hmm. and is thinking to himself, "I'm a pretty good dad. Pretty great. I'm doing pretty." I'm doing pretty, pretty good. The motherfucking fucking one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at me balancing yeah. personal and business. Uh huh. Pretty impressive. Yeah. And and dude, it is just so amazing. He is on the boat, and literally, people are screaming at him, and he's just not listening. He doesn't forward. Doesn't care. He shouldn't be speeding, and he is, and he just plows right through it, yeah. causing destruction and leaving it in in his wake, and in his behind him, and he doesn't even look back once. Just a microcosm, a single yep. scene that describes his entire life. And you know what? He'll go to bed and sleep like a baby that yeah. evening. And you know what song's playing? The wheels and I keep turning. turning. Yeah, fire in the sky. Yeah. Right? Because no matter what, the wheels keep turning. Of course. Just keeps moving. Amazing song choice. Keeps moving. Yeah. So we go to episode 11. Oh, boy. This is uh, House Arrest. And this is where, uh, okay, everything that's going on with Bevilacqua. Now, we didn't mention, I don't think, uh, in that episode 10, mm -hmm. that within that episode, not, we that we found out at the beginning of the episode that there was a witness for the Bevilacqua case. Yes. But it's such a great scene when the guy, like, opens his newspaper and it says, mob related. Yeah. And that name, Tony Soprano, Soprano comes so back shit. up. Boom. The guy, the it's witness. on the fridge. Get it! Get it! <laughs> <laughs> the wife yeah. is screaming. Like, yeah. now, now! Get the lawyer's number. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, he, and and I love Paulie. Sleep well, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and he immediately... That witness is lost. So we as the viewer know that Tony's not in d uh, immediate danger anymore. They don't actually have a Bevilacqua witness. Well, they thought that they were going to have to stamp him out. Right. And at the same time, he's getting told, stay away from criminal activity, take it easy, be smart. So he starts becoming, you know, the trash king in New Jersey. Yes. And he starts going to the office. And it's so funny because he's, when he goes to that garbage association thing, he starts to freak out because I, I took it as everyone's talking about all these things that he has no clue about. All these responsibilities of like normal people. And and what what the the happy wanderers are all around him. Yeah, and he has that thing with Richie where he told him not to sell coke, and he's doing I it. I hate anyway. how much you make me fucking ride you. Yeah, yeah, and that's what it is. Just do what I say. Yeah, and everything would be fine. Yeah, but and, Richie's over here like I gotta earn tea. And Richie and Junior think that Tony's the one that's going, I want it all for me. Well, that's the other thing, too. I forgot. Episode 10, Richie came to Junior and said he wanted to whack Tony. Yeah. He said that that was a plan. Junior didn't commit to it yet, and we know where it goes. But the fact that that's at least on the table, and that, of course, goes back to the episode that we talked about last week, which is the coat mm -hmm. that the that the husband yeah. uh, had on. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Tony, Tony trying to occupy himself in that office. Hilarious. Making the office pool. He's doing an the... office pool, and the guy's <laughs> like, uh, police came, they caught Coke on a route, and he goes, you guys want to torch a truck? And he goes, I'm kind of busy with this pool. <laughs> yeah. It takes him like yeah. two days before he's having sex with the secretary. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to blow off steam. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, and I love in the hospital how he flips out at the woman, and she's trying to give him a diagnosis. She goes, well, you know, blah, blah. And he's like, this fucking bullshit, blah, 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 blah. And then her little dig is, you could lose some weight. And then she leaves. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, yeah. Just watching him try. And so while Tony is going crazy mm -hmm. at the office, 
Melfi. Yes. Is losing her mind. Yes. Getting in fights in public. Getting in fights in public. And and she's stressed out. She's obsessed with Tony. Yes. And she's drinking heavy. Yeah. Poor Melfi. In between patients. Embarrassing embarrassing herself in front of her son. Poor son. Yep. And. Although, you know, she felt like she could scrap if she wanted to. Oh, yeah. You definitely. And she don't even need the knucks. No. 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 No, but you're an earner. I'm an earner. So I gotta earn. Yeah. <laughs> Melfi's going crazy. Tony's going crazy. Yeah. And old June's going crazy. Well, June has found himself young Catherine Romano. Yes. Now, this is an interesting thing for June. Because the thing about Uncle June is he doesn't want to be an old man. Yeah. That's why he gets so frustrated about falling down. Uh-huh. That's why he gets so frustrated about help. He hates that old guy who lives with him. He just gets so fr- uh but ba- um Baklava? No, 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 the old man that was there before Bobby. You know, the guy with the glasses who's hanging out with him all the time. Who? I don't even know the guy's name. What? Yeah. Who's this guy? There's an old man who like drives him to court and stuff like that. I don't remember that guy. Well, he's not very memorable, but uh, mm. Junior doesn't like him. But the point, it really is sweet. Bobby going like I'm in awe of you. Why don't you let her come in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, Junior. I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. I was hungry. He likes to mop up his sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to beat it, June. <laughs> but June doesn't want to be an old man, right? Yeah. So the idea that this Catherine Romano. June doesn't want help. No. No. And, he, and, and, and I, th- I feel like he's almost repelled. To, from Catherine, because mm-hmm. she's an old lady. Yeah. And it's like, while this is a good companion for him, uh huh. he wants, like, you know, somebody in their 30s. Yeah. Somebody, maybe in their 40s. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that, that's he not... He doesn't want to eat old pussy. <laughs> no. He, he wants to eat young pussy. You remember how much he loved Roberta. Woo! He really shot himself in the foot. Talk about the one that got away. Oh, boy. You know what? What? Go ahead. If he had just sucked it up. Pussy? Yeah, you know fine. Mm-hmm. He would have, if if he had not been so offended by that. Yep, he would still have had if, it all. If he had been more secure, mm-hmm. he would s- still be with Roberta. Yes, Mikey Palmisi would still be alive. What? Because they wouldn't have put the hit on Tony. Ah, if he had yeah. been more secure, and wow. he might have still been the boss. Wow. Although he probably still would have gotten brought into jail but still the real reason that he wasn't the boss was because he couldn't be like once he got out of jail tony was like you know now that we both know what you did this is what i'll give you and that's all you'll get yeah that relationship wouldn't have been like what a nice feminist subplot yeah for all the benefits of what would happen if you just eat pussy he could have just had more yeah you know, seconds. You know, I don't think Catherine helping. I don't think Catherine Romano is down for that. No, but I do like that she takes care of him when she puts his little sleep apnea mask on. She that's kisses nice. him on his forehead. That's nice. She cares. I like about that. Him. Yeah, that's I what you that's want. That's a subplot. I hope she becomes his wife. You want them to get married? Yeah. You want them all to just like live a life of crime, and then at the end, just find somebody they love and have a white picket fence. Yeah. 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 Man, what's so bad about that? Well, it's like, uh, you know how uh, every mafia story is either dead or in jail uh-huh. at the end? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> uh, I just want to, you know, have your pussy and eat it, too. That's, I get it. <laughs> I just want to have your cake and eat it, too. You <laughs> I know? understand. I understand. Uh, I Can't mean, a girl have it all? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, speaking of love... Richie and Janice get engaged. Oh, yeah. They're officially engaged now to yeah. be married, mm-hmm. which, I don't know, I feel like it's very conniving of Richie April. Totally. And Tony sees that. He knows. He knows. But how are you going to explain that to Janice without it coming across as insulting and egotistical? Yeah. She doesn't want to believe that to be true. No, and it's very Montague and Capulets. It's very... Yes. Now, you you, know, now, you're, now you're pushing them together. Yeah. And, and it's very uh, incestual in a way. Yeah. Familial. You know, th- these all are getting interconnected. Yeah. You know. Now, when you see this building, right, you see Richie is mad at 
the fact that he can't sell coke on his garbage route. Mm -hmm. He is really mad about the jacket. Mm -hmm. He has already gone to Junior with a proposed idea to pop Tony. Now, is Junior on board with that he to, had, to he get did, Tony, or is that a play? He is didn't he commit. Chess? He didn't commit yet. We haven't gotten to episode twelve yet. See, I think that's Junior playing both sides. Yeah, I don't think it's him. That's like me showing up here with food, not with the intention of giving it to you. Me eating and then being stuffed and then showing up and going, oh, hey, I got you this. Right, which is not true. That's no. why you do the right thing. You text before going, can I grab you something? Yeah. That way I know mm -hmm. you got that for me. Yeah. And that's a nice gesture. That's a nice thing. Some... That's a nice thing to do. Chicken nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, chicken chicken McNuggies. Tribute to the boss. Yeah. With hey. the uh, sweet and sour gravy. Eat your nuggets and sleep well, my friend. <laughs> Is that a threat? That's <laughs> a well wish. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm Paulie. I can never tell. <laughs> yeah. no, sleep well, my friend. Sleep well with good dreams. <laughs> no fever dreams. That was, that was a Paulie. Yeah. A Paulie moment. Uh -huh. Sleep well, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> See what my friend. Dude, I've said, I say, hey, get home safe. And I said that to a guy and he goes, the fuck does that mean? You think I'm I'm too drunk to get home safe? And I go, what? no, man, I'm, I tell everyone to get home safe. Be nice. Yeah. What are you talking about? I mean, he would have really freaked out. I know that like, you know, like my wife will be like, hey, text me when you get home just so mm. I know you got home. Okay. He would have wanted to kick your ass if you did that. Mm. You yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do I need to check in with you? No, I was trying to be nice. I was trying yeah. to be nice. Yeah, yeah. Hey, carry carry this breathalyzer with you. I, I give one to everyone. What are you talking about? <laughs> so by the end of episode eleven, uh, Tony and Christopher Christopher's out of the hospital. He joins the gang at Satriali's, and Tony is Tony lasts one episode in the garbage office. Oh yeah, he can't. He's do like, it. I can't. He can't. And they try to bring him back when they get World War World War II memorabilia, and oh, Tony and doesn't even it. go. And that's his wheelhouse. It would be like if they called me and they were like, Sam, we got a whole truck full of Undertaker and Macho Man Randy Savage gear, and mm -hmm. I was like, Ah, yeah, I better right, stay in this fun. office. Go, and yeah. I'm and I'm dressed up as Macho Man in the background. I'm like, Oh yeah, <laughs> Sammy Roberts. And I'd hear you on the other end of the phone, and I go, They must be. Such fun. Mm -hmm. The cream Such rises to the top, and I would, I would want to be there. Mm -hmm. I would want to be there, and I And then I would hear, I'd hear Soder was there with you guys, mm -hmm. and I'd go, he gets to be there. And mm -hmm. go, yeah, the government's not watching him. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the cost to be the be boss. the boss. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, salute. You know, salute. Hey, salute. Salute. I I will say I love at the end of this episode. Yeah, there's something I like about criminals and the cops getting along i like i that. just want everyone to always be happy i like that because it's almost like there's an acknowledgement of you know we're both doing a job yeah you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i'm not here to bust you i'm yeah. here to do my job you're gonna do what you do mm -hmm. eventually this is gonna come to a head but today salute yeah today salute we're human because you know what Today, salute and sleep well, my friend. I'm a cop. You're a robber. But before all that, we're human beings. Yeah. Sleep well, my friend. Mm -hmm. Salute. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I don't know if this was a nod or not, but I took it. That last scene, Carmine in the accident. Ooh. You know who else is named Carmine that got in an accident? Who? Uh, in the beginning of a Bronx tale. Wow. Guy named Carmine gets in an accident. Right in front of the fucking hangout spot. Wow. The Che Bippy. Yeah. And yep. uh, that is the beginning of a Bronx tale. I don't know if that was a reference to that. Well, we do start seeing New York sprinkle in more and more, right? Yes, but also another reference when Rena gets mad at Tony and Tony leaves the apartment. Tony. He leaves and she goes, get out. Fuck you. And she throws a vase and it hits the door and it's the exact same shot from Goodfellas when Ray Liotta is leaving his girlfriend's place and she throws a Coke at the door. Can you imagine if you're David Chase and you're like, I love these mob movies. I Incredible. just want to make my own. Incredible. And you pay tribute to all of them, but you do it better. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, that's like Ghostbusters Afterlife. They pay tribute to the first movie with these little nods. 
and you recognize it and you feel warm inside. But are you saying Ghostbusters Afterlife is better than the original? No. You can't, but it's but it's tribute. But you can't have Ghostbusters Afterlife without the original. Like, you can't have Tony without Carm. They go together, and they make each other better. Salute. Do they make each other Salute. better? Salute. I Salute. mean, how? Salute. How do they? Salute. I mean, I guess Carm. Salute. Like, fixes Tony's dinner. And she loves him and supports him. And Tony provides her with a good life. Salute. I mean, didn't we just talk about how Carm can never be happy because of Tony? But she is happy because of Tony. It's a compromised you... happiness. Is that a... Just like I would be happy if they never made Ghostbusters Afterlife, but they have made it, and I'm pretty happy. Are you thinking maybe we shift into doing Ghostbusters Afterlife podcast? Yeah. Salute. Salute! <laughs> Salute! Salute! <laughs> All right, let's get to, let's get to episode 12. Let's yeah. do it. Episode 12. This is a biggie. We're talking about the knight in white satin armor. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing reference. Okay. So, first things first. Two massive stories on this episode. The fact that this is the episode before the finale is like, does that, did, did episode 12, which is as far as we're going today. Mm-hmm. Did episode 12 leave you going, because you're saying last week that you watch it sometimes going, I don't understand how this show lasts yes. for seven seasons. Yes. Just looking episode by episode. Yes. When you go to episode 12 of season two, yes. do you go, how? What the hell are they going to do for a finale? Yeah. It is a singularity theory. It is, I do not have the bandwidth in my brain to imagine a world in which something better than this can exist. Because we start with now Pussy has gone the complete opposite. Opposite. He's decided, and I'm sure that psychologically this is a thing that happens. Yeah. The, the, you know, you fought it and you fought it and you fought it. And now, like you said, the five stages, mm -hmm. now he's come to acceptance. And not only has he come to acceptance, but he's, he's acting, he's, he's going the extra mile. He's acting like he's a detective himself. Yeah. Pussy. Too little, too late, puss. I, I mean, and they, you were never going to be a detective, And man. it's so sad to watch. It's the kid that every day stares out the window waiting for his dad to come home. Yeah. And he's not. And it's like, and except on this one, it's pussy's fault. It's mm. usually not the kid's fault. Every now yeah. and then. But it's usually not <laughs> yeah, the kid's yeah, yeah, fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this time. He has some self-awareness. Yeah. This time, pussy, yeah. he did it to himself. And there's no one to blame. And it's so sad. It's it is. It is. You know, getting shot in the back of the head and getting told, going, is that, is the stars out there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're out there. Go yeah. take a look. Yeah. See the stars up there? Boom. Aren't they nice? Boom. Back of the head. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Pussy has decided that he's going to be a detective, and what he does is he hears that they're going to steal some Pokemon cards. Pokemon. 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 <laughs> and this motherfucker... Goes into Christopher's office, and he's not only wiretapping Tony, he's trying to take the whole team down to do a little bonus extra credit. He's well, yeah. going, I got a link on a call. And then he goes, you got something I can get in on? And he goes, bing, bam, boom, this, this, this. And he gets the info, and then he goes to leave. And Chris goes, what about the car? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's given up on any sort of idea of like, loyalty mm -hmm. or or anything like that or well no I'm, I'm just gonna he is knives out painted himself into a corner yeah yeah and he's gone in that other direction skip tells him like pussy like you can't just give us info all you do is you talk to him you record them mm -hmm. you give us the information that's it yeah that's your whole job that's what you're doing pussy goes no 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 skip yeah you saved me now all of a sudden skip is a savior and i'm mm -hmm. sure that happens with these agents he goes, you saved me. You're saving my life. You're going to take care of my family. You're going to put us in witness protection. I'm going to do right by you. And he follows them. And he ends up getting into a car accident. Oh, and he puts a 7-Eleven employee in a fucking coma. He's an idiot. Uh, He's an idiot. Uh, and Skip bails him out. And here's what's interesting. I noticed this. In one car conversation, Skip speaks of guys that flipped and calls him a cooperator. Right. And then 
Skip has a conversation with his boss. He's eaten the bread and, and meats that Tony got him. Tells him you're getting too close. And then in one of their last Interesting conversations. Interesting that that's what he's eating, right? What? Interesting that he's eating the bread and meats that Tony got him. So yes. you're getting too close. Yes. Oh, right? wow. Yeah. And then in the last conversation that Skip and Pussy have, he doesn't say cooperator. He goes, one snitch I worked with, which is a. Yes. Yes. We're not friends. Yeah. You're a fucking snitch. Do your job. Yeah. He gets all and his money by the way, and breaks them off like $20. It's the opposite of what we talked about a minute ago. Now, instead of being like, look, you're a cop. I'm a criminal. Yeah. Well, we're all human beings. Now it's like, this you're a, a bad guy. Yeah. I'm a good guy. Yep. You're going to do what I say. Here's my thing. What? Tony or Pussy is like, Tony, I got passed up. My best friend's Benjamin Franklin. But didn't he get passed up way before? Yeah, but I think. And then he fucking does Bellavacqua. And then why does he flip to try to be Skip's best friend after Bellavacqua? I think he goes, to, I think he just went through a psychological crisis. I mm. think that like, it's one of those things where it's a self-loathing mm -hmm. cycle, kind of. I think he, I think. I think, psychologically, Pussy comes to this realization that he's not going to get out of this. Like, he's not going to be able to be Tony's guy. Mm. So, like, this fantasy that he's living where he's still Tony's best friend, it's never going to happen. So, in order to stop himself from having a full mental breakdown, mm. he starts remembering all the reasons why he doesn't want to be Tony's friend anyway. Mm. and then he goes the complete opposite direction and he goes you know who saved me you know mm -hmm. who really had my back skip mm. skips the one that had my back this whole time and i think that that's the mental gymnastics that he does to deal with the traumatic situation that he's in right now as a as a snitch mm. that's what i think that's why that's why i think pussy made such an abrupt turn well, also, Pussy is like, you know, I was thinking, Arizona. And, uh, you know, after I'm in jail for two or three years, I'll go and do this job. And he's like throwing this out there as if that's fact. And Skip is like, buddy, you're not going to get to choose where you're going. Two, three years, you're fucking doing a lot more than that, pal. And you should be lucky for it. And Pussy is lying to believe the lie to make himself feel better. Exactly. Exactly, and he thinks that he's going to be able to help so much. Yeah, that he's going to—they're going to be like, "Oh, we." I mean, we're going to. This is not. What are you, Frank Abagnale? now? Yeah, no, ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. To me, this is not dissimilar from Christopher thinking that he's going to be a Hollywood screenwriter as opposed to somebody that's just feeding the beast. Mm. Pussy thinks he's going to be a real detective he's as opposed to somebody who's just machine. feeding the beast. Yep. Like, you can't understand. Yeah. You're a mob guy. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Like, you have a lot of power in the world that you're in, but not in this world. I mean, Livia said it. It's all a big nothing. Livia did say that. And Tony said it, too. How about... uh, uh was waking up from a dream. How about Livia laughing at Tony falling down? That doesn't happen yet. Yeah, it's in, uh, well, well, I mean, it's in oh, this episode. Yeah. It is in this episode. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. shit. That's yeah, we right, haven't gotten there. Yes, we haven't gotten oh to the context God, yet, it. but that's Holy in this shit. episode. Yes, yeah. you're right. Okay. Rena fucking starts toying with Tony. Tony puts a hammer down and goes, hey, fucking go with that guy. Get a better life. Yes. This is fucking over. Yes. And Rena goes, I'll kill myself. She threatens to go to the to kill herself. She tries. Tony gets up, goes in the middle of the night, whatever. And Carmela is pissed. Livid. Livid. Because we've already had this conversation. Mm hmm. She can't be calling the house. And she said, All I've ever wanted was you. And she thought, I got him. Now it's over. And then she smells the fucking clothes. She doesn't realize what's going on. And then Tony tries to explain it to her. Poor girl. She wanted to kill herself. Because of me. <laughs> because of me. As if as if Tony is gonna play on Carmela's heartstrings it's like benevolent. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. I forgot oh, you are I'm so sorry. You're Tony. so irresistible, yeah. Tony. That yeah, oh, and you saved her? Yeah. Oh, what a good oh, guy. You, you, what a good you, guy. You're making me feel sorry for your whore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. He but, goes he goes over there and he tries to get her set up with a shrink. 
Yeah. The fucking, her, the Russian one-legged friend. Hilarious. Svetlana. Svetlana. Yeah. Svetlana is great. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and you need to see a shrink. And they go, oh, the Russian. And, and isn't it great, by the way, that Tony is like warmed up to therapy because he understands the merits of it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the yeah. old Tony, you know, from before Melfi yeah. would never have said, totally. you need to see a shrink. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I you know, uh, that situation's really tough to be in. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I can only imagine for Tony. For Tony, it's. I mean, again, David Chase tapping into some realities. Yeah, that, uh, you know, yeah, because can what really do you? I mean, people's hearts. Because this thing that started as a as a lark, this thing that started as just like an affair, mm -hmm. this hot little Russian thing. Yeah, yeah, is now all of a sudden. So real life. Very real world consequence. That it's like, now how do I juggle this with a family and the family and everything going yep. on? It's just, it's chaos. And Tony does try to do the right thing by end it. He, Yeah, he does. Yeah, he uh, yeah he does try to end it, but it's like, Tony tries to do the right thing by cleaning up the mess that he made. Yeah, yeah. You know? like And has Sil go over and give her $75,000. <laughs> and Svetlana's like, he is a very smart man. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I mean, oh, oh, huh? And then talk about 4D chess. J Richie comes to Junior. Oh God, he goes. We got to We got pop Tony, and Junior's like, okay, we're gonna do it. Junior flips, tells Tony, yep. Hey, just so you know. And by the way, like, Junior does give himself credit. He goes, like, I was a double agent. Yeah, I yeah. was working for you, which well, is not true. He tested the waters because he had Richie go to uh, that guy in New York's guy. Yes. Who lost the bid. Yes. And he tries to convince him. And this guy's like, I'm not going against Tony Soprano. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. And Richie goes back and goes, we'll work it out. And fucking Junior's like, that's no. what I mean. That's when Junior, if the guy in New York, if that had all worked out, it would have all been fine, and he would have gone for it. I think Junior would have absolutely yeah. gone for it. But when Junior saw it wasn't going to happen, he was like, "Oh no, my little no. nephew." And, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> As if he hadn't done the same thing a year yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. History's but, repeating itself. And then what I love is Tony's telling Sill, and. Uh, he still like walks up to the camera, puts his face this far away to think, and he's going. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it will be a consequence to have him around. <laughs> like he had to walk to the camera to think about it, yeah. and then goes to Tony, and it was just such a perfect still face. <laughs> it really was. It really was. And then they start making plans. They start making plans to kill Richie, mm -hmm. which I have to believe. When you realize that plans are in motion, are you getting excited? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This motherless fuck has got it coming to him. <laughs> yeah. Tony's Tony, he's not going to send Furio. No. I want to do this. Yeah. Hey, puss, like old times, let's go. Right. Now, when this starts going down, are you thinking, when the plans start being made, are you thinking, oh, my God, we've got our finale for the season. On the next episode of The Sopranos, yep. that's when they'll finally get to do hit. it. We Christopher comes back. Boom. Bam, bam, bam. The whole crew's together. We're getting the gang back together. Bing, bam, boom. Done. And we get to see what we think will be uh, maybe Richie's last supper. He's, but, he's yeah. sitting there with, with, with Janice. Uh huh. You know, and it's like, okay, we'll see what Richie's up to. Little does he know. Well, guess what? David Chase is so good. If... If fucking Christopher, Paulie, Sill, Tony kill Richie, that's just basically a repeat finale of the first season when they kill Parisi. Right. So, what are they going to do instead? I mean, they Jesus go Christ. <laughs> what a turn. <laughs> he hits Janice. Punches her. Punches her. Right in the face. <laughs> Evil. And so Janice... Shoots him in the heart. Jesus Christ. Just I mean, like that. I mean, next scene. Aerosmith like, predicted it. Janie's got a gun. Uh, oh, yeah. Janie's got a <laughs> gun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, the balls. The balls on this show to build the audience's hatred for a character 
for an entire season, only to middle of the episode, the episode before the finale, just randomly Janice just shoots him and kills him. Yeah. Like, and what? at the same time, turning Livia into almost a comical character. Yes. Upstairs. How do you do the Advil? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> What's going on down there? You know, this like, oh, mom. Yeah. And then, then you see Tony and Janice. Bonding. Work, coming together. Yes, working together. Through like, murder. Moida. Patreon. Get us to kill someone. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, brother and sister, finally, after yeah. all this time. And again, in a weird way, it's a testament to Tony's character. At the end of the day, he supports his family. He steps up, does what he's got to do. And, uh, you know, he it just and, and it's so interesting, too. I noticed that uh, when he does this. The next day he shows up at home and he's got like a five o'clock. Sh- you you see the trauma of the actions on his yes. face. Gandolfini is such a good actor yeah. that you see the weight of the world on his shoulders in these like looks when he's just sitting there. When he's explaining to Carmel, he's like, I got to spell this out for you. Yeah, yeah. Don't, Don't make after 18 years. <laughs> but I mean, the, the way he he comes in and also when he walks up on Richie's body and Janice is there. You see a like a quick smile. He's happy. He's happy. She, Janice took care of her problem for him. This was going to be an issue. It's well, lucky now. day. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Janice is panicking, and Tony knows exactly what to do. I exactly. mean, he springs into action. <laughs> okay, here's what we'll do. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They make uh, calls his boys. Yep. They make Richie disappear. Yep. He's in a fucking Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, and then, oh. How about Livia going like this? I knew it wouldn't last. Oh. oh God What a damn. monster. God, she didn't have a chance. Every turn you tell her she she's fat, she goes with a guy, you tell her she's a whore. Oh, I suppose you're not going to give me a kiss. Fuck <laughs> this. Walks out, trips, a gun falls. falls out, falls. She laughs at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh. I mean, but but in in just that span of twenty four hours, what Tony has to go through mentally and emotionally, and shoulder it all, and not share it, not get it out. He can't even speak about this with his no. wife. No, there's nobody to talk to. No, he can't even tell this to Melfi. Nope, because he's criminal. Yeah. And then he so so when this happens, are you happy? Are you shocked? Are you annoyed? Are you like, how did you feel as somebody that is like you? I mean, you were that new viewer. You were that person whose hatred I'm, was building for for Richie. I'm shocked. I'm thankful he got what he deserved. Yeah. Janice is the one to do it because but it's funny because she was almost abusing him, using him for his money. And then she goes, if something happens to you, it happens to me. When he was like, we're going to be tight with money for a while. And then she tells him, Tony doesn't want you hanging out with AJ. He gets pissed, throws yeah. a beer. And she does that to fucking get under his skin. Well, she's also her mother's daughter. Totally manipulative. Totally. And uh, it it just, I mean, <sighs> sending her on a, on, a th- on a bus. And dude, I love the scene where she goes, uh, she goes, what happened to him? And he goes, we buried him. She goes, oh. And, he goes, and they, the, the birds were chirping. She goes, oh. And she like buys it. That was such a comical scene between yeah. the two. Because it's like it'd be impossible for that to be the scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she just decides yeah. to believe it. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, talk about characters that were brought on for this season and everything. And it, it amazes me that in one season they can get you so invested in a character and then get them out. Richie, like Mikey Parisi. Janice. He got under your Mikey. skin. Whatever, this guy's annoying. Fuck him. He deserves what he gets. But Richie, there's such a rich backstory with him. Did you think that Richie would be around for a very long time? Yes. You did? Yes. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking they got to stamp him out and it's going to get botched. Something's going to happen. So when Cliffhanger, they put, when season they, three, first episode, they deal with it. When they put the hit on Richie, you were like, there's no way they're going to get him. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Wow. I'm I'm thinking this is 
I mean, what a cliffhanger it's going to be. Where where the last episode is planning probably in the last half three quarter quarter of the episode they try it something happens something goes wrong because they can't just have the another season end with the murder that we all kind of expected right you know and then uh, yeah yeah (laughs) and then what do you think of uh the fact that we say goodbye to janice i mean she's not gone for good you don't think so no okay and you like more story i remember you saying that uh you wanted more Davy story. Yeah. And you got it. And I got to give credit to my gal, too, because I said, how are they just going to introduce this guy? And then in one episode, he's gone. She goes, well, they can't follow along every character that they bring into the show. And yeah. I'm like, I guess. <laughs> Good on her for not ruining it. Yes. And but- and they gave me what I wanted. I wanted more Davy. Yeah. I wanted to see how that ended. Well, we don't know yet. Well, maybe we do. I'm not going to say anything. Um... But you think, you think more Janice? I think more Janice. When do you think Janice comes back? Right? Away? You mean what does she come back from Seattle? I don't know. I mean, right, something's I mean, got to happen with Livia. Livia is now home alone. Tony's got to deal true. with that somehow. That's true. maybe he sends Livia to Seattle. That's true. And then maybe we do see we how Livia ruins Seattle spinoff show. Love that. The Sopran- the ladies. The Soprano the ladies. ladies. Sopranos. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm with it. S- sickness in Seattle. All right, so this is where we end. Episode 12. Bro. Here's the big announcement for Prima Volta. Oh, also, can Go I just ahead. say, Carm, again, at the end of that episode, fucking incredible. Oh, my God. Her and Tony on the couch. Yes, I'm going away to Italy. You're going to have to take Meadow to a tennis clinic and AJ to his dentist appointments. And Tony, if you don't do it, <laughs> I might have to kill myself. <laughs> I mean, Carm, you queen. <laughs> you absolute queen. I fucking love you. You love that moment. Incredible. She took her power back. Oh, my God. And what's Tony going to say? Tony, I might have to kill myself. Amazing. <laughs> oh, just rubbing it in. Rubbing his nose in it. Rubbing his nose in it after he just had to clean up a body <laughs> and dispose <laughs> like, of this. another human's life. He's gone. <laughs> gone. <laughs> I mean, my oh. God. Okay. Carmella. So here's the big Prima Volta announcement. We've been doing three episodes per episode. Yeah. We thought... The, for the finale of season two, and then we'll get back to doing three episodes mm-hmm. per. We unless th- something else crazy Unless happens. something crazy I don't happens. Know. Who knows? But just because of the way the math worked out, and I thought yeah. there would, from what I know, I figured there'd be enough here. This ain't your Prima Volta. It ain't my Prima Volta. We're going to do a special episode next week. Yes. For just episode 13. It's going to be a Prima Volta just for the season two finale. Lucky number 13. Now, going in to this finale episode, Sam, do you have any predictions? Where the fuck is this going to go? Do you have any fears? What thoughts? The fuck is going to happen? So that's, I like that you watch TV that way, that you don't sit there going like, and then they're going to do this and they're going to do that. You're like, bro, I don't know. You've taken me on this ride thus far and it's been great. I hate Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know what I don't want to know what other people think about something. I want to go see it for myself for the first time, eyes wide open, everything's new, mm-hmm. and I, I I'm I'll tell you this much. Yeah, I watched it immediately after the other episode. Yeah, we said we're going to bed after this, and I said, "You got another thing coming." Yeah, I'm staying up. <laughs> I'm watching. I gotta see what happens. And afterwards, I'm taking a long walk around the block to process. Yeah, I gotta think about this stuff. Yeah. I gotta think about this stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back <sighs> to cover the finale <sighs> of season two <sighs> of The Sopranos. Make sure that you leave a comment. Thank you for not spoiling. Thank you truly for not spoiling. It's awesome. We appreciate it. And thank you for the love. Yeah. Getting a lot of good feedback. Lots of good feedback. And it's very much appreciated. Yeah, really, really, very much. We have such a good time people, doing this. Uh, we really do. And a lot of people say we have great chemistry. That's nice. And and that together with the show, we've been murdering it. 
Get on that Patreon. <laughs> Get on that Patreon. Well, uh, uh, if, if we did our first live Sopranos Prima Volta from jail, that oh, would be huge. It'd be like Johnny Cash live from jail. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be oh huge. My God. And, and for another tier of Patreon, you could talk to us through the glass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Tiger King, too. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the Sopranos. I don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. And I don't know where this show is going to go, but I'm excited to see where both end up. Well, then stay tuned here. Make sure you got your alerts turned on so you get alerted every time a new episode comes up. Uh, uh, hit like and all that stuff. Follow Ian on Twitter at iAnimal69, also on Instagram and everything. And uh, I'm not Sam, as you know by now, across the board. We'll see you next week. Yes. For the season finale of Sopranos Season 2. It'll be Ian Fidance's... Prima Volta. Salud. 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 What's the... Commandatore. 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 Passa pejore. <laughs>